Hi y'all, this is Matt Freeman with Custom Tennis Screens Incorporated here in Fort Worth, Texas. Just want to kind of give you a little 101 for windscreens. Uh, I've been doing this for 25 years and we have an application that we've used on all of our jobs that we've done. Uh, where we come in and we rope the top of the windscreens, we rope the middle, we rope the bottom, and then also along with that we rope the sides. A lot of people question on whether that's a appropriate way of doing it. Uh, I've never had a job that we've lost a fence. Uh, people say, well, the manufacturers say that if you rope it top, bottom, middle, it won't break away in the wind and uh, it'll knock your fence over. I've never had this happen in all the jobs that I've done from colleges to apartments to private clubs to any job that I've ever done. And I, I want to kind of give you an example of what I found out on that. So let's say you're hanging a windscreen like this right here. This is on our this is on a north end of a tennis court. Most windscreens are the baseline is on the north and south end, just so when the sun travels by you're not looking at the sun constantly. So on this north end of this windscreen, let's take for instance, think about today the wind's blowing from the north to or from the from the north to the south so it's, you can see a little billowing in this windscreen and the wind's blowing against it so what would essentially happen is this if this was put up here with zip ties they're hoping that the wind would break the zip ties at the top so that that would fall and relieve the stress on a tennis on the fence so that the windscreen would fall and the fence wouldn't fall over. Well, then you've got your court's gonna be full of zip ties, your windscreen's gonna be flapping till you can get the wind to stop and get the maintenance team to come back out there and hang it up. That's what they call wind whipping. That fence is whipping itself against the fence and it's gonna shred the windscreen within a short period of time. So if that's, that's what they're wanting to do, well, how come when you go over to the south end of a tennis court, that wind would be holding the, the wind the windscreen up against the fence and rather than pushing it out like we had on the north end the wind would be pushing uh, pushing the windscreen up against the fence so the zip ties wouldn't break then you wouldn't have the windscreen fall and the wind would still be against the fence and the fence doesn't blow over. So it kind of defeats the purpose of it. So then you get these windscreens hooked back up and the wind changes and blows from the south to the north. Now you're gonna have the south end, all the zip ties are gonna break, you're gonna have the wind whipping, the courts are gonna look horrible, you gotta maintain it. So what we've done is we, we've taken that away to where your courts for 10 years aren't gonna need any maintenance whatsoever. So, uh, that's kind of my theory on that. I haven't had any problems with it, and uh, it makes windscreens last a lot longer to where you're not having to be out there to maintain them, to clean up zip ties, to order new zip ties, to get a maintenance guy out to take care of them. So that's kind of the first thing on, on maintaining and getting a facility to where you, you don't have to spend a lot of time once they're up and doing it. The process does take a lot longer than doing it with zip ties, but the end result is, is once they're up, you're not going to have to do anything other than that. So let's move on from there. And I want to show you how to measure your tennis courts or your fences so that you can order windscreens or you can know how much you're going to be having to get bids on and getting bids to get a measurement of your fences. The best thing you can do is we'll walk over here. Every tennis court is going to have a, a bar that's going to be on the side and that's called a tension rod that tension rod is on both sides it's pulling the fence fabric tight from from pole to pole so when you measure you want to get a, you want to get a uh, a tape measure that's going to go the length of of the tennis court what i what i do is i measure from inside of tension rod to outside of tension rod on the other end so if we were going to measure this little fence right here, I would come over to the inside, uh, just hang that on the on the on the uh, bolt that holds the tension rod in, and I would measure all the way to the outside of the next tension rod. This one right here would be 
11 feet, one inch. So if I was replacing a windscreen on this fence right here, I would be using an 11 foot, one inch windscreen. And that's gonna get me from tension rod to tension rod, give me a little bit of slack to be able to pull that windscreen tied into the fence when before we start installing the rope. We then come in and we tie rope in the top corner. We lace it all the way across the top. Then we come in and we do the bottom of the windscreen, lacing it at the bottom with rope all the way to tension rod to tension rod. Then we come in and we take from our top to the bottom. We take rope and put it in through each grommet through the, around the tension rod to give it the secureness on the, the right and left side of the windscreen. Then we come back and hang the center to the center part with rope on the middle of the windscreen. That's going to keep the windscreen tight against the fence. It's going to allow the, the, the rope to work with the windscreen to keep it tight and not have to worry and have a maintenance free windscreen and get 10, 10 to, you know, seven to 10 years out of your windscreens. So uh, from there, I wanna show you all how we do some installation, how if you're going to do this on your own, it does take some time. We'll show you some techniques of how we do it to get that started, to make it a lot easier to hang it. But again, here I'm just, windscreens 101, I want you all to feel like if you have any questions, I'm here to help you. If I can't get to your job or whatever, feel free to give me a call. Let me help you walk you through on what you're going to need, what you need to look for, some simple questions that you want to ask. While I'm on simple questions you want to ask, these windscreens right here are what we call a polypropylene open mesh windscreen. As you can see, there's about a half an inch of windscreen and then you'll have an opening. That's going to let some wind through there. And talking about letting the wind through there, I get this all the time as I go to courts and people say, you're going to need to put the little windows, the little cutout windows that let air through. It's about an eight inch by five inch opening with a window. Let me ask you all something. We we're talking about the wind blowing the windscreen this way on the north and south side. Wind is not like water. Wind will not seek its opening. So let's say I, right here, I put a hole, a, an opening of a, a, a vent for these windscreens. That vent is going to be somewhere centered in the top section of the windscreen. That supposedly is supposed to let enough pressure off this windscreen to save the fits. That wind doesn't hit the windscreen and go, oh, let me find the opening and then goes to the opening. So you're only allowing a little bit of pressure off where that hole is on the windscreen. And in some cases, we've had places where they put a, a hole up at the top and then they put a hole down at the bottom. That has helped a little bit if you've got some very weak fences. What I would suggest doing in that is before we do the windscreen application and want to get a long time maintenance is let's look at how we can support the fence a little bit more. And there's some other techniques to doing that. But talking about windscreens, the other thing that I find when I go to these clubs or these jobs where we've had to use the windows on the windscreens, 90% of the time, those windows are a great place for people to put trash that are on the court. They don't want to walk it over to the trash can or they may not be a trash can. So there's a ball can or an extra ball or a cup or something laying on the court and it's in the way while they're playing. That individual will just pick it up and they'll shove it down in that opening. So then the back of your fence has all the kind of trash and balls that were on the court. Not a good thing. If you're at a competitive place where you play, that person that's playing, it's an easy thing to take your, take your towel hook it up in there into the window, the, the opening, and every time you get mad when you've lost a game or something and you're switching sides, you grab that towel out of there, jerk it, obviously that's going to rip the, uh, rip the, the vent, and then you're gonna have a problem with the, the windscreen being ripped. So it's not something that I do, it's a, cost in, it's a cost thing that a lot of the manufacturers have put in. They're not gonna know how you put them up, they don't care how you put them up but it will relieve them of saying this will help keep a little bit of wind resistance off your fences if you have weak fences. So I see that a lot, but it doesn't really do anything as to saving the fence because you're only having an opening of about eight inches by five inches. And again, wind isn't going to seek its opening like water and come through there. So you're only allowing a little bit of wind to come through there. Okay. Uh, what I want to do next is we'll, 
we'll uh, set up to where how we're going to do some installs just to kind of give you some basics of how to do that but again I want to make sure that if we're going pretty fast through this I'm here to help you all even if I don't get out to do your job I would want you to feel like you could give me a call ask me some questions do some run through uh, I know we were talking about different fabrications this is an open mesh windscreen they also have this to where instead of having the little opening, it's going to be completely solid, which is a closed mesh windscreen. You have polypropylene material, you have vinyl coated material. They've also come out with a new material that is a sprayed on uh, uh, foam type windscreen. If you wanted to put a logo on there, those are the best ones because the, the ink that they use to put the, spray the logo on will adhere to that foam. It's more of a rubberized. These windscreens that are polypropylene have a very slick material uh, from the surface and the, 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 the ink that they use to make the, the logos doesn't stick to that as well. So you might see applications where they've taken a logo, they put it on a vinyl coated material, sewn that material to this windscreen. We like to use the foam, uh, which also comes in closed mesh. It also comes in open mesh but the foam sets up a little bit more to where it's tackier, uh, it's rubberized, and the ink stays, stays a lot longer on there. And so you're not having to have the windscreen sewn, vinyl windscreen sewn onto the polypropylene. Polypropylene is very popular with uh, places that are gonna have a bunch of kids out there that might be playing uh, uh, hockey or might be playing other things than tennis on a court. If I were to take a knife and cut this material, cut a slit in this material, it, it would not continue to rip. Where some of the other applications of vinyl, the old type vinyl, it's like a, a lady's uh, pantyhose on the, they get a runner. Once it gets a runner, it'll shoot all the way down and that's what's gonna cause the windscreen. So if there's a, if there's a place that's gonna have uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of other activity, I, I like to use the, polypropylene or the new fabric which is the uh, uh, the foam poly polyester and uh, polyester windscreen the ones that I talked about with the logo those are becoming more and more popular they do come in different colors as far as black and green if you want a special color of blue yellow uh, brown terracotta there are also colors in that and those all come in the vinyl coated poly polyester so I'm going to stop right here and then we will go to how we how we set up to do an install. Okay, what we're going to do here is I've got a windscreen here that we're going to replace. Uh, I'm at a local country club. They're wanting to redo their windscreens. This is an eight-year-old windscreen that our company put up eight years ago. Uh, they had some money in the budget to redo some of the windscreens, so we started with these ports that been up for eight years just to get a new look as you can see right here this is a brand new windscreen we haven't tied the middle back yet we'll do that once we get on the other side and the winds blowing to the south or we have somebody else to help us hold that against there so we can rope it what I'm gonna do is I've got a fence down here that had a windscreen like I showed you I just didn't take a picture before we did it I'm gonna take a start the process of putting a windscreen up we're not gonna actually go through and show you in a time frame of the whole procedure. It takes about 45 minutes to do this one windscreen. So with time allotment, I'm, I'm gonna piecemeal it in and show you what it's gonna look like without it, step one, and then the final step. But I hope that what I get the information, what I want you all, the information I want you all to get out of this is that I'm here to help you make your courts look better, some problem areas you may be having. I know a lot of the places I go, windscreens are a big issue. Uh, this is a way to uh, think about when you're getting windscreens, what you're getting, what you can ask to offer the people. Do they do the roping method? Are they just doing the tie wraps? Uh, is there a warranty? Um, how long is the warranty? Uh, I, for instance, our warranty is a three year. Uh, uh, it's not a prorated warranty, it's three years. If the in, in windscreens end up coming down off the, off the fence, we install them for free. If there's the rope breaks, we come back and re-replace the rope for free. We maintain anything that can go wrong other than vandalism. 
somebody coming out here and spray painting them or somebody taking a box cutter or a knife or something like that and it's vandalized but as you can see after this one's been up here for eight years at a country club there's not going to be a lot of wear and tear that should happen uh, so again if anybody has any questions or anything that I can help them with, I want to I want to come here to help you. I'm not trying to sell you your, my windscreens. What I want to try to do is help educate you on some things that you can do that you might not understand or know to ask. So give, feel free to give me a call at 817-791-4592. Again, that's Matt Freeman with Custom Tennis Screens. 817-791-4592. So step one of hanging this windscreen on that opening, we're going to clean the fence off of its existing windscreen before we put the new one up. I start in the corner, I zip tie with the, to the grommet to the, to the tension rod and we'll stretch that windscreen across the opening uh, using tie wraps in all the corners and getting it centered on the fence the way we want it before we start roping it. Step one, we've got all four corners zip tied to the fence, so it's centered in there. We've got uh, it tied in the, in the bottom corners, the top corners. This is the step that we'll do before we start the roping process. When we start the roping, I'll start at the top. I'll work from right to left or left to right, and then I'll go down to the bottom and do the bottom. It doesn't matter whether you go left to right or right to left. And then we'll do the sides of the, the fence down the tension rod that I showed you in the earlier of how to measure it. Uh, we want to use that tension rod, not just walk to, uh, rope it to the fence fabric. And when we're roping the top part, as you can see, there's a top rail that goes across there. Our windscreen will hang right to the bottom of that top rail, as you can see on this one that's already done, uh, next to it. And that way it gives us a straight line and we've got a support feature that we're roping to it's the top bar I see a lot of these where they just zip tie it to the windscreen fabric I mean to the fence fabric just zip tying it to the fence fabric you're gonna pull those those uh, bands that are holding the fence fabric to the poles and then the whole fence will come down so or the fence fabric not the poles but the fabric so we rope it at the top to the bar rope it to the bars on the sides and that's why we custom fit it so that you're going to go all the way to the tension rod. We're not going to be short three or four inches because we don't want to we don't want to tie that windscreen to the fence fabric. All right. All right. So here's the final version of a windscreen hung with rope, laced in it up at the top, and then we've come down the sides, along the bottom, and up the side here, just to kind of give you some background on this I think most of you have seen Texas A&M uh, we did their facility when they built it back in 1998 and they still have well this is the second set of windscreens that we put up there in 22 years so they're getting about 11 years out of each uh, run of windscreens so this method does work it will save you a lot of time it'll save you a lot of headache and it, you won't have to come out here to worry about whether your windscreens are up or down and the neat thing is, is you don't have to keep ordering zip ties and having somebody come put them in. Now, as we finish up here, I hope that this helps everybody in any problems that they have or any ideas that they want for their, their courts, for their windscreens. Like I said earlier, if you have any questions or any concerns, I'm here to help you. And don't hesitate to give me a call at 817-791-4592. I'll send my email in with this. Uh, it's custom, C-U-S-T-O-M, 10S, as in custom tennis, at sbcglobal.net. At any time, feel free to give me a call if you have concerns or questions of what you're trying to get or trying to do and not sure of what, what's going on. Feel free to give me a call. I want to help you guys out and get your courts backed up into shape. Thank you. Here at uh, another area that is uh, a very ugly area that I see when I come up to courts and probably happens at your courts is a 
come out there and this is this is what I see as far as the net being tied back to the net post and um, I'm going to show you a very simple easy way to prevent this from happening and how how we tie them and uh, hopefully you'll uh, take take this video and be able to spruce up your cords. Okay, starting at the bottom of the net post, there should be an eyelet here for you to start a string to. If there's not, that's no problem. You can just tie the string around the bottom of the, of the pole. First thing I'm going to do is after I tie that there to get it secure, I'm going to come in through the bottom grommet. And I'm going to go and wrap through the eyelet and bring, bring the rope all the way. So this has the little lattice work to be able to rope that. If yours doesn't have it, you can obviously go around the back of the pole like this and then come through. So what I'm gonna do since the lattice work is here, I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So before I start up into here, I'm gonna go back through the bottom of that eyelet just so I can get two strings in there because this is the area that they break most often. So I wanna give it a double, a double standard of rope. I'm going to go back through the grommet and the other trick is, is when I do that and I pull it tight with having two bands in there when I let go of it it holds the tension there so it's, it's a quick little easy tool to use from there after I've come back through the other side <laughs> I said it would hold it you're going to go up to the grommet to the next grommet straight very straight from the bottom up I'm going to go into that grommet I'm going to come back through that grommet again and here's where I go up the next one go through that grommet with the rope come through go through the lattice work or I could go around the pole like this it doesn't matter just wanting to get it secured to the post I'm gonna go back in that so I'll have two strings in each grommet then I'm gonna go up to the next one go into here Go through the lattice or again I can go around the pole. I'm gonna go into the grommet. Okay, I've got it. I don't have to worry about how tight it is. I'm just gonna get it started and then I'll pull all the slack out. I'm gonna go into the onto the eyelet or again I can go around. I'm gonna go through the eyelet. We'll come back, we'll come back through. Now some of y'all will have this on your net. You can tighten that back to it by lacing the rope in and out as I've done here and then back through and then what I'll do is take that rope and bring it back to here so once I've gotten that I'm pretty well to the end part all I've got to do is just take my slack so everywhere where this rope is against the, the, the net all I'm gonna do is pull it right there I'll come back around here pull the slack pull it tight to the net Then what I'm gonna do here is come up here pull the slack very tight it cinches up there very quickly Grab this part of it, pull the net to the pole, and then I'm going to pull the slack from up here, go back through my grommets, get it tied against there, and I can start my weaving back through here and bring this back to the eyelet. So now I've got the rope, the net completely tied to the post. I'm just going to wrap that around the eyelet, make a knot in it, and be done. What I'll do there is cut the excess off. So now I've got the net completely against the pole. It's going to stay tight. It's not going to come off. And it was very easy to tighten the, the tension to the pole. So it's a nice clean look. Uh, it really stands out when people walk up to your court and see that that's well maintained.